Today I will be discussing Nancy Holt's Sun Tunnels, Charles Ross's Star Axis, and James Turrell's Rotting Crater. My main focus is how the uncommonly used mediums of light, space, and other celestial phenomena are the main means in which Holt, Ross, and Turrell represent the concept of time. While the inspirations and the natural materials that these artists use are similar, the artworks are executed in completely different ways, each with a unique intent and purpose. On a 40-acre plot purchased from the government in northwestern Utah desert, four concrete pipes are laid out in an open X position 86 feet long on the diagonal. These works are the sun tunnels of Nancy Holt, and in common with artwork of Ross and Turrell that I will discuss later, they are situated in a remote desert location. The desert is traditionally a site of revelation and transcendence. The viewer feels insignificant in comparison to the openness and immensity of the landscape. In the desert, one's sense of scale is stretched. This is certainly one of the emotional factors in the decision to choose the desert as a site for sun tunnels, star axis, and rotten crater. However, there are also practical reasons such as atmospheric clarity and the absence of light pollution in the night skies. All three artists embrace this notion of relativity and revelation. The sun tunnels are arranged to align with the year's extreme positions of the rising and setting sun on the days of the summer and winter solstices. The solstice's sunrises can be viewed across the axis of the structure, which emphasizes the importance of sun tunnels orientation. By marking the yearly positions of the sun on the horizon, Holt indicates the cyclical time of the solar year. The landscape of this site is overwhelming to the viewer, and Holt sought to bring this vast space of the desert back down to human scale. The concrete tubes concentrate the view of the landscape and the light, sharpening one's perception of the seemingly endless desert panorama. Through the tunnels, parts of the landscape are framed and focused. Cut through the wall in the upper half of each tunnel, are holes of four different sizes. These correspond to the size of the stars and their arrangement in the constellations. During the day, the sunlight shines through these drilled holes, projecting a changing pattern of circles and ellipses on the bottom of the tunnels. The sun, being a star, is casting spots of starlight in through the star holes, so that when the viewer walks through the tunnels, they are in effect walking on stars, bringing the sky down to earth and making it tangible for the viewer. The sun tunnels create a paradoxical experience for the viewer. They are scaled to accommodate the human body, yet are set within the monumental landscapes of the desert and sky, which also oppose each other. They are remote, yet the tunnels close in the atmosphere of the site. Also, they interact with annual cycles of time and with star constellations light years away, yet the projected constellations within the tunnels put the stars at the feet of the viewer. The paradoxical nature of sun tunnels echo that it is timeless, while simultaneously being time-specific. Time is the central theme being represented in sun tunnels. Holt sought to create a space where time was both physically present and intellectually tangible, where the relationship between time and the earth was manifest. As she stated, time is not just a mental concept or mathematical abstraction in the desert. The rocks in the distance are ageless. They have been deposited in layers over hundreds of years. Time takes on a physical presence at this site. Even Holt's chosen materials reflect the notion of time, using long-lasting materials such as steel and rocks. She hoped to demonstrate a sense of time lasting beyond the human lifespan. Holt's sun tunnels work with concepts of time in numerous contexts, such as durational time, geological time, and cyclical time. Charles Ross's star axis also evokes cyclical time, however on a vastly larger scale. This project attempts to make the Earth's space-time changes tangible and is oriented on a millennia-long cosmic cycle. 
It is both an earth and sky sculpture and a naked eye observatory. The name, star axis, refers to the axis upon which our Earth rotates and to a phenomena called precession. Precession is the phenomena of the Earth's spin in space, which is not stable but actually wobbles in a great 26,000 year cycle. A concrete cylinder in the side of a mesa, 100 miles east of Albuquerque. Star axis is aligned with the Earth's rotational axis. It points to the North Celestial Pole. It is a five-part structure designed to give the awareness of the motion of the universe in relation to the viewer. The central element of star axis is an 11-story tunnel set parallel to the Earth's axis to frame the celestial pole. As one climbs the stairs inside the tunnel, one will see increasingly larger circles of the sky. These will each represent the orbit of Polaris at a different point in history. Each stair is dated to indicate in which year it is representing. The shadows will describe the Earth's rotation in terms of huge time spans and minuscule ones, from eons to seasons to minutes. The viewer will move back and forth through time following the pattern of the 26,000 year cycle of the Earth's axis. The walk through the tunnel leading upward from this chamber is a type of astronomical ladder of time. Because precession is a cyclical process, any observation made within the tunnel represents a view of a time from the past and the future. The space becomes time. Ross intended the work to give the viewer the feeling of standing at the boundary between earth and sky, and at the site within the desert, both of these elements have equal strength. Only an hour and a half from Santa Fe, Star Axis is also at the boundary between civilization and wilderness. As he stated, one does not have to leave the modern world completely to remember one's place among the stars. All that is needed is a place of focus, and Star Axis provides this space. It is a site of heightened focus where an individual can experience the movement of the universe in relation to his or herself. Ross's star axis is fundamentally an exploration of both time and light. Like Nancy Holt and Charles Ross, James Turrell works with time and light in Rodden Crater. However, he has completely different intents. The Rodern Crater is built into an inactive volcano, and it is located 70 kilometers northwest of the small town of Flagstaff in Arizona of the Painted Desert. In addition to clearing out the bowl of the volcano and smoothing it into an elliptical shape, Turrell designed a system of rooms and connecting passageways at the crater's base, at the fumaroles, at the tip of the bowl, and at its center, thus leading the visitor up through the crater into the sky. Many of the spaces were built around celestial events, such as full moon solstices, equinoxes, the movement of the sun and the stars, reflecting how he captures celestial time within the space. Each space essentially looks to a different portion of the sky and accepts a limited number of events, as Trell explained. It is intended to be an elaborate naked eye observatory. The sequence of spaces that lead up to the final large space at the top of the crater magnify events, intensifying the experience of light by isolating and emphasizing it. Turrell describes his viewing chambers as apertures in which the artwork not only opens to the sky, but actually enables an opening of the perceptual field to the viewer. Turrell seeks to create an individual experience by producing a situation for the viewer. The Rodden Crater was designed to create an intense perception of light and celestial events. The viewer gets the perception of being capable of grasping the light. It becomes tangible in the space. As the artist states, in working with light, what is really important to me is to create the experience of wordless thought, to make the quality and sensation of light itself something really quite tactile. It has the quality of something intangible, yet it is physically felt. It is not so much observing the events, but observing something that has happened inside the space. The areas inside the crater will react to the light from the sky in certain ways during the day than in other ways during the night. 
echoing cyclical time similar to Holt's work. He has made a space that is sensitive to the events that happen in the sky, and taking light from those events and somehow making it work within a space. The construction of the crater itself, one of the most prominent aspects of the artwork, reveals a phenomenon known as celestial vaulting. This is the impression that the sky forms a vast dome above the Earth. When the viewer enters into the crater bowl, a huge amphitheater-like space, the curvature of the bowl brings a sense of the upward bowing of the sky. The sky is open and gives the illusion of being convex, while the ground below looks concave. The experience is heightened when the visitor lies down on a large stone slab that sits in the middle of the bowl. Through this disorientation, the boundless sky stretches the visual field to its furthest reaches. Carroll was attempting to create spaces in which viewers could perceive the subject of his work, light itself, celestial events, and time, situating the viewer in relation to the subject of the artwork to create an experience was Turrell's main goal. Sun tunnels, star axis, and the rotten crater all evoke similar ideas. For these works, not only was the site important, but also was the approach to the site. As the viewer approaches the site, the work becomes visible from miles away in its vast natural landscape. The artwork became something to visit in itself, rather than one of many artworks in a museum to see. Each of these works can exist only in their particular place, evolving out of the site. Also, each artwork is integrated directly into the landscape. For Charles Ross's Star Axis and James Turrell's Rotten Crater, the artwork had to feel as if it was grown from the earth, and that it had not imposed but was found in place and discovered from the land. As Turrell explains, he did not want Rodden Crater to be a mark upon nature, but to be enfolded in nature in such a way that light from the sun, moon, and the stars empowered the spaces. This is an idea not unlike Ross's works. Although less obvious and in a different way, Nancy Holt's sun tunnels also fit into the desert landscape. Despite their industrial production, the sun tunnels respond to the natural landscape because of their color and their material concrete being made a hardened mixture of sand and cement. Also, the artist views her work as inseparable from the site because of her own experiences of time and space in the desert and of its specific local contours which form the piece down to the very last detail. When discussing these three artworks, it is easy to see the connections between them. By using desert and sky landscapes, Holt, Ross, and Turrell all seek to give the viewer a unique experience of time, light, and celestial phenomena, each with their own distinct purposes.